Hi Capricorn, welcome to your April 2020 general tarot reading. It's Serena here. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing well. If you're not subscribed um, and you like this content, please um, subscribe. I have been doing this for almost five years and I have never asked people to subscribe because I felt like, hey, if they want to do it, they will. Uh, at that time, I didn't understand about um, all of the, the things that go into promoting videos and now more than ever, it's a big deal. And also like, like this video if you like it. Um, you know, I, I really, that, that's very hard for me to do because I feel like everybody, you know, can do what they feel like doing, but um, it's, it's an, a necessary thing at this time with how algorithms are. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. <laughs> that <laughs> we could do without, and that, that one too. But the central theme is all that matters. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to just pick another card just for clarification because a two can be, okay, I have a decision to make and blah, blah, blah. can kind of leave you up in the air. Okay. Well, the heart of the matter is the Nine of Cups, which, if you know anything about the meanings of uh, tarot cards, is a very positive minor arcana card, wish fulfillment. Um, and the person, you know, this card is faithful to the, this is the Morgan Greer deck, faithful to the Rider Waite, and um, it's got that same kind of, what would you call it, smug expression on the person's face, like, look at me now. And the thing about look at me now is I don't have a problem with it if a person isn't doing it um, to rub in somebody's face. But you know what? Sometimes if you have struggled, and we have here with the Eight of Swords, maybe felt oppressed, uh, perhaps being in a relationship that was very um, bad for you, but you couldn't um, find the strength to get out of it until you finally uh, were able to. Being proud of that achievement is awesome. I don't think there's anything wrong with that whatsoever. I, I feel like people sometimes confuse um, um, being proud of one's advancement with egotism and it's not the same thing. As a matter of fact, especially when it's like personal development because y you know you can see how far you've come, how much you've grown and and maybe there were some naysayers in your life who kind of said you can't do that. So this can be anything. This could be like a family that has kept you down and maybe you've been the black sheep and you went out and did something with your life. Now Capricorn, for sure, you're the kind of sign that really <laughs> pulls yourself up by the bootstraps. And even if you come from a very humble background, you can be very diligent, ambitious, and be like totally committed to success and actually that is the theme of the mountain goat that um, you are represented by which is kind of climbing the mountain well life is like a mountain and every ledge every like step upwards is a different achievement and a Capricorn person is not daunted by starting at the bottom as a matter of fact, that is the rags to riches theme is that idea of um, starting with nothing, 
<laughs> now I think of this starting from the bottom now we're here <laughs> maybe I'll make that the <laughs> maybe I'll make that the title <laughs> but anyway you know what I'm saying um, and you know I, I think it's wonderful to, to take um, joy pleasure in that that's another thing about the nine of cups it can be feeling very good you know emotionally The higher message is the five of wands. And in some cases, if this is related to like a workplace situation where you had to have the courage to leave, maybe for a long time you didn't with the eight of swords and you kind of told yourself self-defeating uh, thoughts, you summoned up the courage and were able to kind of break free of those constraints and that allowed you to um, get ahead. And because you got ahead, you have been able to, um, you know, leave that job and you've landed this dream job um, or even start your own business in some cases. But this is showing that, uh, but this can be a positive thing where you got in the fray and you just showed your stuff to others. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, that you you weren't timid. You weren't so timid that you just kind of like held back. You were like, I've got what it takes and I'm going to go for it. Because this is a card of competition. But it doesn't have to be toxic. It can just be very ri rigorous. Um, or vigorous, I should say. Um, this can also be a card where if you quit your place of employment, there was a lot of toxic energy. And so it was a really, a real blessing to be away from that. And um, so that's a good thing. What crosses you is the Seven of Swords. Be careful about a person who is deceptive, who may be like working behind the scenes, trying to do something. Um, this individual might be a co-worker, somebody who is presenting themselves as your friend, your confidant, and they're really um, maybe gathering information. Like for instance, let's say you did leave a particular job, but you kept in touch with um, a certain co-worker, and they're kind of like very inquisitive, asking you a bunch of questions, you know, peppering you with questions, it could be because they're trying to, uh, what they say in the narcissistic community, hoover or suck up like a vacuum information about what you're up to so they can run and tell to the supervisor, the current supervisor. And what that could do is if it's in a certain, if you're still working in the same industry, even if you're working as a consultant or if you're working for a competitor, they can try to blackball you or spread rumors about you. Um, so you want to be discreet. And so with the Seven of Swords, this is about a need for discretion, but it's in a challenged position. So you know what I was thinking? Because usually Capricorns aren't like all that much of, Yeah, it's not that I think you're secretive, but you're not really that much of a, a blabber, you know, like you would just, an open book that would just tell everybody your business. But if you have Mercury in Sagittarius, <laughs> uh, you might, or, or the Moon in Sag or something like that, or Aries, you might be more guileless. You know, you may be just more um, open, honest, not thinking about what somebody else might be up to, and then you get yourself in this pickle. And so you have to practice discretion and not necessarily, uh, and don't divulge important information to somebody who is still at that company unless you trust that person implicitly and you know them like the back of your hand and you know that they're not going to double deal you. What's coming in is represented by the King of Cups. This is a sympathetic 
type of a boss figure or other like fatherly individual, very um, emotionally nurturing, mature. Um, this could be a counselor. If you are seeing a counselor with the Eight of Swords, um, this may be something, especially, yeah, you know, like I said, um, oh, I didn't say this. Maybe I should have said it. <laughs> um, you have, um, you've been having, um, kind of in April, you're having the sun in the, in the fourth house of home and family. And so you, you may have your focus in this particular area of life, the area of your childhood, the area of, um, and maybe you're trying to heal this area because everything is connected and anything that you may have gone through that is connected to Eight of Cup, uh, I'm sorry, the Eight of Swords, may be um, definitely connected to your childhood. And, you know, you can't just focus on present issues. I, I didn't, I don't think I really talked about this in terms of love matters, but the Nine of Cups could be having that sort of love come into your life after feeling oppressed in your life for some reason. So maybe you visited a marriage counselor and you got counseling for yourself and you thought, okay, well, I'm doing this for the, you know, as a couple, but now I realize I'm not compatible with this person and I deserve better in my life. And you've gotten that because we have as the outcome, I did pick an additional card, but we have the two of pentacles. This can be mulling over a job offer. And this is why you may be feeling like you just won the lottery with the Nine of Cups and emotionally feeling that sense of pleasure because you know that um, this is a great situation. It may be overseas, and so it would take you far away from your current phys physical location, which may be a good thing because perhaps this is something that um, will set you off in the right direction. You are having, um, well, you know, one thing I should mention is that there was a, a lunar eclipse in Cancer in January. So this could be playing out in this time frame where you ended a marriage or that the a significant partnership. And therefore it's, it's like you're changing your life radically. In the summer, in July, or I should just say July, you're going to have a lunar eclipse in your sign. And I think that might be the last one in Capricorn during this eclipse season for um, Cancer and Capricorn. So that may be the grand finale of letting go of an aspect of yourself. But between now and then, um, there may be other changes afoot in terms of employment, in terms of relationships and the outcome or, or you know an additional clarification card is the justice card now this card is connected to Libra Libra is, a, is an air sign <laughs> so that's part of it uh, but it's a sign you know that squares Capricorn but still may be quite attractive to you but this may be you know the scales of justice um, a legal decision like a divorce rendered in your favor, in the upright position, a feeling of relief, you know, maybe that's what the Nine of Cups represents, of like, oh, thank God, that's over with, but just the sense of um, you know, getting what you deserve, you know, getting, you know, that feeling of fairness playing itself out. With the Five of Wands, you may have had to admit that you weren't getting along. And and maybe, you know, so that makes it easier to let go of that dream because you know that it really wasn't happening to begin with. So um, anyway, I think this is a wonderful reading. I hope that you enjoyed it, um, Capricorn. If you would like a personal reading, most of my readings are astrology-based. Um, please visit me at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.